We know that the solution to a system is the point on a graph where two lines intersect. So far we've been solving them graphically, but that's kind of a pain because we're constantly having to go in and adjust the window. We're going to switch gears today and look at how can we solve a system algebraically. There are two main methods. We're going to start today with the first, which is solving it by substitution. Solving a system algebraically is going to be a lot faster than solving graphically. It's also a lot more fun in my opinion. Like most things in mathematics, there are a series of steps that we're going to follow in order to get to that solution. Step one, we're going to choose a variable to isolate, and if possible, we wanna choose a coefficient of one. So if I take a look at the four variables in the first equation, this is the one I wanna isolate because I will avoid having to work with fractions later. I've indicated that this is step A, so when you refer back to those procedural steps, you'll know which is which. Now, in order to solve a system, we have to bring those two equations together because we're looking for the point where those two lines intersect. If I know that y is equal to this, I'm now going to substitute it into the second equation in the place of y. So we're bringing these two equations together. y is equal to this, I'm putting it into this equation in the place of y. So we're substituting in, instead of a y, we're putting in the value that y is equal to, hence the name substitution. So you can see we still have the 3x here, we still have the plus 2 here, but instead of y, this is now what y is equal to, and then we still have the equals negative 11. So this equation is identical to the first one we have here. The only difference is instead of the y, we've substituted in what y equals. And the reason we do that is so that we can now solve the equation. We can't solve an equation if there's two different variables in it, but if you look now, we only have one variable, x. So now we can go back to what we've done previously in order to solve for the value of x. We distribute this two in to eliminate the brackets, combine your like terms together, and then divide out that seven to get one x has a value of negative five. Now, a coordinate point is a solution. This is only one value in that coordinate point. We have to solve for y now, and again, we're doing this algebraically. So once we get the value of one variable, we're going to substitute it back. You'll see we already isolated y here. So we can substitute in what's the value of x and then figure out from there what y equals. Taking this equation here, because we already isolated y, I'm going to substitute in negative five in the place of x. Negative five times two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 12 is positive 2. So remember, a solution is an ordered pair. So as an ordered pair, remember those round brackets, we think x is negative 5 and y is 2. We can verify that by substituting them back into each equation and making sure that the left side is equivalent to the right side. I need to check both equations. So I'm going to take my first equation, I'm going to substitute in negative 5 for x and positive 2 for y. I'm going to go through and make sure does the left side equal the right side, then I'm going to check the other one. So I'm going to take my second equation, we're going to substitute in negative 5 for x, positive 2 for y, and again we're looking to see does the left side equal the right side. If both both sides are equal, then we know that this is the solution to our system. Step one, choose a variable to isolate where we can take what that variable is equal to and substitute it into the second equation. If you take a look here at our x values and our y values, I would choose to isolate this x because then we avoid having to deal with fractions. I'm going to get you to pause this, work through those four steps, and see if you can algebraically solve this system. After I've isolated my first variable, I bring the two equations together by substituting the value of that variable into the other equation in the place of that variable. So you can see I've taken my second equation. Instead of an x, we've written down what x is equal to. Everything else stays the same. I now have only one variable, y, that I'm going to solve for. Begin by distributing in the two to get rid of those brackets, combine your like terms, and isolate y. When we do that, y has a value of one. Now a solution to a system is an ordered pair. To get the value of x, we can see that we've already isolated x up here. So now I'm going to take this equation to find out what x is equal to. Knowing that y is going to have a value of one, we're gonna put a one in here. Negative four times one is negative four, plus six gives me an x coordinate of two. We're then going to verify it by taking each equation, substituting in the value for x and y, and then checking does the left side equal the right side. Now you may be thinking this is not a lot faster than graphing, but it's going to be because the verification, unless it specifically says to verify, I would do this mentally. So I would just quickly see, okay, two is x, one is y, two plus four is six, 
4 minus 3 is 1. I wouldn't bother writing all of this down. And your algebra skills are going to become faster where this is just a speedier method than having to adjust the window. And in the third example, which variable would you choose to isolate? And then go through and see if you can get the solution to the system. The beauty of this is you're going to know if you're right. When you substitute them back in and verify, that's your clue, did you correctly solve for those values? The easiest way to go about substitution is to choose to isolate the variable with a coefficient of one. When we do that, we get b equal to this value. We're gonna put it into the second equation in the place of b. So I'm gonna take this equation, instead of a b, we're substituting in what b is equal to, algebraically solve for a, that's the only variable left in this equation now. And then when we get the value of a, we can solve for the value of b. Now, if you don't have x and y in the equation, we put the coordinates in alphabetical order. So a goes first, b goes second, and then again, I would verify this mentally. If a is negative one and b is six, I would say, okay, this term has a value of negative four, plus 30 is 26. This term is gonna have a value of negative three. Six minus nine is equal to negative three. We can't always avoid fractions. If we see something like this, you'll notice that the variable y is already isolated. So if y equals this and y equals this, therefore these two pieces must be equal to each other. So I'm taking what y is equal to here and I'm substituting that into the place of this y. So now we've got an algebraic equation with only one variable, and now we can go ahead and solve this by moving your variables to the same side and then isolating x. I'm going to move the smaller coefficient just so I don't end up with negatives in the end, although it's not that big of a deal. Now remember, we're adding fractions. I need a common denominator. My lowest common denominator is a two. So two over two is equal to one over one. Two plus one is three, and the denominator stays the same. Now I'm gonna divide out three halves to get one x, and I'm gonna divide out three halves. Remember, when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying two times two, which gives me four over three. That's the value of x. And then you can substitute x into either one of these because y is isolated in both. I would probably do this one just so I avoid more fractions. But again, we need a common denominator. My lowest common denominator is three. So I've got 15 thirds, 15 minus four is 11. The denominator stays the same. I'm going to verify it. I'm going to substitute it back into the first equation. Y is 11 thirds equals one half times X is four thirds. And then I'm multiplying my fractions, multiply the numerators to get four, multiply the denominators to get six. And then when we go to add the fractions, we again need a common Common denominator. I can see that my lowest common denominator will be 6, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 6 to keep them equivalent, and then add the numerators, keep the denominator the same, and reduce to see if the left side equals the right side. And you're going to do that for each equation. Another way that you can quickly check your verification, remember you have a store button on the calculator. So x has a value of 4 thirds, so if we type in 4 divided by 3, and then you're going to store it press the x variable key right there, and then equals. Every time you enter an x, your calculator is going to put in that value of x. So if I take my first equation, 1 half times x plus 3, this is the value of it. Now if you check, y is 11 thirds, so is 11 thirds equal to that one? If so, the left side equals the right side. And then you could do this again. So we're going to take our second equation, and we're going to go 5 minus x, knowing that it's going to put in that value of 4 thirds for x and again check does it have the same value. Conclude with a fun one here. You can see we've now got multiple fractions. I do have a coefficient of 1 on the x. This is going to be 1 half y. This is going to be negative 1 half x here. So I could isolate for x and then substitute into the second equation or we can also try to get rid of those denominators. So I'm gonna show you how to do E. In order to get rid of this denominator divided by two, I'm gonna multiply two by two, and I'm gonna do it to every term to keep it equivalent. So that eliminates the fractions here, which just gives me y equals x plus 10 when I isolate y. I'm gonna get rid of that divided by four by multiplying by four, and I have to multiply every term by four to keep it equivalent, similar to what we did with general form. So I'm gonna have four x, this denominator is gonna cancel, 
leaving me just with the 3y on the numerator, and then 4 times 4 is 16. If I isolate the variable now, then we can see that we have y equals and y equals, so I'm going to take what y is equal to and put it in the other equation in the place of y. So I'm basically setting them equal to each other, and then I'm going through and solving for x, substituting back in, this one is easier than this one, so I'm substituting back in and getting the value of y. The second way you could get this, if you didn't want to eliminate the denominator originally, is to recognize that this has a coefficient of 1. So if we move this 3 quarters y over so it becomes negative 3 quarters y, now x is isolated. So I'm going to put what x is equal to into the second equation in the place of x. So I'm going to have y minus, and then I need to remember to put this whole thing in brackets because this negative sign is going to get distributed throughout, divided by 2 equals 5. The first thing I want to do when I solve this is to get rid of my denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides, giving me 10 on the right, and then that 2 is going to cancel with my denominator of 2, leaving me with the numerator. I'm going to combine my like terms together. Now remember, we need a common denominator. The lowest one is 4. So 4 quarters plus 3 quarters is 7 quarters. And then I'm going to add 4 to get 14. And then we're going to divide out 7 quarters, divide out 7 quarters. And remember, when we divide, we're fractions, we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to become 56 divided by 7, which gives me a y value of 8. And then similar to what we did previously, you would substitute back in to this equation and get the value of x. Because it's the same equation, we would get the same solution. This is similar to a problem you've seen before. We first need to come up with two equations. Look for the totals. We have a total amount of people, and we also have a total amount of money that we raise ticket sales. I'm going to get you to try to come up with the two equations, and now algebraically, can we solve this question? Make sure that you choose variables appropriate to the context, and because I have a coefficient of 1 in both of these cases, I can solve this algebraically by substitution. We can either isolate A or C, it doesn't matter. You will get the same answer both ways. I just happen to choose to isolate A. And then I substituted what A is equal to into the second equation, and I solved it. Now, because C represents the number of children and A represents the number of adults, we shouldn't get a negative value. So if you do, double check to make sure you didn't make a mistake. And then again, you can always verify this. So make sure that the two together add up to 220. And then if you go 98 times $9 plus 100 122 times $6, we should end up with the total amount in ticket sales. By using the system we were able to solve this word problem, just make sure at the end you go back and actually answer the question that you're being asked.